What's going on, everyone? Uh, today, we're going to look at how we can take all of these buildings um, and for the sake of fabricating them or making them or cutting them on a laser cutter, we want to optimize it to fit it onto a sheet such that it looks like this. Um, this might take three or four sheets and waste a lot of material, waste a lot of money and waste a lot of time. And so we're going to just really quickly take a look at how we can easily nest all of these buildings in an organized way. It's kind of beautiful, isn't it? Look at that. All of them organized in a smart kind of way. Nice algorithm. And so uh, sit tight and hopefully this will help you with any laser cutting projects or fabrication projects. Okay, so to begin this example, the first thing we need was a context model. I've just grabbed uh, a context model from Blender but and brought it into Rhino, but you can do that anyway. And I have a number of videos to show you exactly how to do that. Um, but here's a model, right now it's in full scale and uh, I need to scale it down. I've also just have this rectangle here which is actually uh, a laser cutter sheet that's been scaled up to kind of compensate for this. But um, right now, if we were to measure this, uh, for instance, this is, yeah, 23,000 millimeters. So obviously this needs to be scaled down to fit into a sheet. Um, this was scaled up by a thousand, but I'm just going to um, scale everything so that this model becomes one to a thousand. So I'm simply just going to select everything. Um, I'm holding shift. What that does is it's going to do a uniform scale, and I'm going to type one that, uh, uh, divided by a thousand. There we go. So now we're basically same thing, but in millimeters. This should be um, 18 inches. Oh, here, I'll just draw another one. So 18 inches. Oh, yeah, there we go. Okay, so this is correct. So just to confirm, so this is 18 inches by 32 inches. Yeah, look at the exact same. And I picked those dimensions because the laser cutter I use, um, those are typically the dimension sizes, but you can set the sheet size to be uh, whatever you like. This is all contingent on the size of your laser cutter or whatever fabrication technology that you're using for this. <clears throat> and so what you're going to notice is that if we wanted to laser cut this, this is where the problem starts to arise. You know, you can't just do this, right? You can't just laser cut something <laughs> like this because suddenly your sheets aren't going to be optimized and I bet you um, this wouldn't even fit on two sheets you know if we were to do this and we were to do this you would see we probably need three sheets to make this work and uh, each one of these sheets is about five bucks so that's fifteen dollars to cut this out and look at all the wasted area so that's what we're hoping to avoid, right? We're hoping that we can, you know, if we're lucky, we might be able to fit all of this onto one. I bet you we could. Matter of fact, I bet you we could fit it on, you know, to three quarters of one. Um, and this is a way to save money and to stay organized. So what we're going to do is we're going to open up Grasshopper. And this is a pretty simple um, script. So don't be, don't be alarmed. And it's a number of skills that are good to just kind of know for Grasshopper. So it's a good sort of beginner tutorial. Okay, so here we are. And what we need for the laser cutter is we need these buildings as curves. So that's the first thing we want to do is we want to make these into curves because they're just going to be laser cutter lines and then we want to nest them. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to open up a geometry component. I'm going to do set multiple geometries and there we go. So I've just set all these geometries here. I'm going to click the screen button here to turn off the preview mode. And I'll just group these and hide these for now. And if I click this, you can see they're visible. And so the first thing I need to do is I just need to get the profile curve of this, which is essentially the same thing as the roof line. So I'm going to do that. I'm just going to do uh, deconstruct B rep. And the thing I'm trying to grab is right now, this is an entire building. And I just want to grab the top face. And uh, this will work for any building. Like if these buildings were all uniform height, you know, maybe this is context, you know, context at one to a thousand is all relatively the same height um, when you're working with sheet material. So this is kind of an expedited solution, but you might, there's other ways too, where we can contour it. And maybe I'll touch on that in a bit, but this is the quick and easy one. So we've deconstructed the B rep. And now if I go for list item and I go to faces, we'll see this seems to have worked but it might not work every time. And I think the best thing to have is like, maybe you can just have this script and plug in another component or plug in a whole new context file and you should be able to just have this to work. 
Um, and this just works. I'm showing you what happens. This is just working because I made these all in a very similar way. So they all have the same sort of face order. But one thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna guarantee that no matter what file it is and no matter how they're made, they're gonna work. So to do that, I'm going to grab the area of the faces, just like that. And if you can look, that's just grabbing a center point of each face. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm just going to tell the computer to sort these lists, the list here, the list of faces, which is here. So now that I've deconstructed the BREP, each uh, building is a number of faces. And I want the first face, face zero, to be the top face. And fortunately, in our case, it is. But we're going to, again, make this 100% guaranteed. So I want to make sure that the face with the highest center point, remember, these points here. So the top face here is the highest in the z-axis. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to type sort list. And I'm going to sort the faces, which goes into A, which is values. And K is the keys. And so to sort it, I'm going to deconstruct the centroid of each face, which is from the area component, and take the Z value. Therefore, now when I plug this in, it's, it's actually, um, it, it starts by being the opposite because like now it's all the lowest points, which is equally fine in our case. Um, that's all we really want. The, the top and the bottom faces are identical in our case, so it doesn't really matter. So, um, and again, if you wanted to grab the top face for whatever reason, you can just do negative one into the list and that reverses the list for you. So there you go. So there's, yeah, I'll just duplicate this. So top face, bottom face. So there we go. That way it's always going to be structured the same way. And then all the faces in the middle are going to be relatively the same. So those won't be organized consistently whatsoever, but the top face and the bottom face will 100% be. <clears throat> okay, so the next thing we want to do, read that, is we want to just get the profile curves of this, because right now these are still surfaces. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to type deconstruct BREP again, or we can even, even a bit easier is we can just do BREP edges. I think it's just slightly less computationally expensive. And here we go. So what you need to notice now though, is if I bake this, each one of these curves is on its own. So we're just going to join that back by typing join curves and then EN is naked edges. So I'm just going to take those naked edges, which means all the exterior curves of the shape. And there we go. I'll take this again. And you can see now all of these shapes are the same and they're all joined. Okay. So we're in pretty good shape. I'm going to save my file now. I'll just name this nesting. And now the, the last magic trick, we just want to take all these curves and nest them into the rectangle here. And for that, there's a plugin called uh, Rhino or Open Nest. There we go. And there's a couple of parameters, but I mean, this is kind of like a one trick component. It really does everything for you. So I'm just gonna take, the first thing it's asking for is the sheet, which is this thing here. So I've just created a new geometry component and I've just set that to the new geometry component. I'm going to plug it into there. The geometry, I'm just going to flatten it to make sure that it's all being treated uh, equally. I think that's pretty good practice. Um, so we're working in millimeters here. And so that's where these things start to matter. So the geometry spacing is one millimeter. And uh, for the laser cutter I'm working with, I typically like to leave about a quarter or even eighth of an inch. So, I'll do 3.175 millimeters as my spacing placement. I think everything else is fine. We can just plug this in and see what happens. Okay, um, and here you have it. So <laughs> it's kind of beautiful to, to see these once they're all nested. It almost feels like an entirely new city grid. That took about 1.1 minute, 1, 1.1 minutes for it to run, which was seemingly longer than I remembered, but um, here you have it. And just to refer back, that was our original, and there it is now. 
So I'm going to leave it at that for this video. Uh, this is a you know just kind of the simplest way to start using Rhino Nest, and as you can see here, um, it's just taken everything and nested them in. And like this would be great for a laser cutter um, or anything where saving material is important. I would also leave maybe a you know I would offset my initial uh, boundary, so my sheet here. I would actually offset this in a quarter of an inch too, just like that, and use this curve just so that there's actually um, a buffer between the, the edge here because you never really know when you get to the edge of a sheet what might be happening. Anyway, hopefully you found the video helpful. I can make more of these videos if you're interested. Um, you know, if there's, for instance, if you want to articulate the different heights of buildings and such, we can do contours, or if you want to, for instance, engrave a tiny little number so that you can then correspond to actually fabricating this and bringing it back to a physical model. You know, we could have the number three here or something and we can slightly engrave that so that it becomes easier to, uh, you know, to, to then place these buildings later, so on and so forth. All of those are possibilities. Um, just let me know if that's something you'd like and I'd be happy to make it. Anyway, hopefully you found that video helpful. Uh, and if again, if you have any questions, feel free to shoot out, leave a comment, question, and uh, subscribe if you want uh, any more videos. Thanks.